question. The main requirement it requires is encounter rate, opportunity. So there are many viruses and fungi which are infecting animals and they don't jump. But when we constantly come across certain types of animals, then we present more opportunities. So when we keep chickens in high densities, or before we invented a car, when we all went around on horseback, or when we were farmers, we had cows. These are opportunities where we associate with animals. Or if we live in Africa, if you go into the forest to collect food, such as chimpanzees or deer, and you kill that food and the blood from the animal drips into your blood because you scrape yourself, these are opportunities. So pretty much all that the parasite requires to jump from an animal to a human is opportunity. And what we're doing now as a society is providing huge amounts of opportunities because we're living a seven and a half billion people so we need a lot of food so it's a lot of chickens and we're living in big cities so if the virus or fungus jumps it's able to spread from individual to individual because you don't spend all your time with your family like once upon a time it happened in human societies you spend yourself your time with loads and loads of strangers that you meet on the metro you fly here to san francisco all of these are providing opportunities to jump from animal to human and then go pandemic because that human goes from a farmer farm in China, goes home, kisses his wife, his wife then goes to clean a hotel room in Hong Kong and then the Hong Kong businessman travels to Toronto and this is how the infection is going from one place to another. So opportunity coupled with global trans transport systems allow parasites to spread. So we have had situations in the past where parasites have infected as many as half of the population or 60%. This was uh, one really good example would have been the Black Death in Europe, which was caught by a bacteria, so not a fungus and not a virus. How do we stop that going on? Um, well, in that case, the Atlantic Ocean was very helpful for large distances. Now it's, it's maybe even easier for such a disease to transmit across the world because people are moving so quickly. So how can we prevent this if it gets going? I don't think anybody has the answer to that. You will see many world governments having strategies in place to have quarantine systems. But even when we have a scare in North America, <coughs> excuse me, you see that people become incredibly frightened. There's a run on vaccines in the same way there's a run on banks in Cyprus when people run out of money. People get frightened and they want things for themselves immediately. They overstock. So it's very easy for society to become pa panicked about these things. So I don't think there are many things in place to prevent these things happening. So what we should better do is to stop the jumping from one host to another. We should stop parasites making these leaps. And we're not doing that. We're doing a disastrous job of that. Even though we've seen history as old as there are many examples of diseases jumping from animals to humans, we're not doing those things. Oh shit. Holy shit. You got blood all over you. It ain't mine. Let's just get out of here. They're saying half the people in Sydney lost their minds. Can we just please go? Some sort of parasite or something. parasites jump from one host to the other is that they're always genetically modified. It's a natural feature of organisms that they make mistakes when they make offspring. And these mistakes create variation. The viruses are really good at being parasites of humans because they produce lots of offspring and those offspring have mistakes in them. So it's a little bit like a Xerox machine photocopy. There are some mistakes and those mistakes are important because for the virus it's like buying millions of lottery tickets. Eventually something is going to have the winning numbers. And when we do when they do encounter humans, they have that winning number allowing the jump. So those viruses which are called RNA viruses are really good at jumping. 
and they have a sloppy copying system. The fungi don't have such a sloppy copying system, so it's more difficult for them to jump. So it's more realistic to imagine that a virus would have done this rather than a fungus itself. But always, when you have a jump, it's always accompanied by change and genetic mutations because that's what's happening to life on Earth all the time. Life is all about mutations. There's our culprit. God, he's not that old. Better keep your eyes and ears open. I should be able to fit through here. Yeah. Um, there are certain parasites which can get inside the brain of animals and destroy the brain in quite a considerable way, creating large holes. Um, one of them is, for example, mad cow disease, which we humans have a similar type of disease called Kuru because some humans are cannibalistic and they would get this disease. So you can have big changes in your brain and you can still move. In some cases, you can even have no brain and still move, as in the case of infections in insects. So parasites which need the host to move around the environment can keep all of the essential things going. Uh, it comes at a cost of other things which are removed. The parasites are well able to infect and have major effects, but still keep the motor systems working. And that's really important because they need those things to transmit. Ellie. 